know, welcome people of God. Good Friday. What is good about this Friday? <laughs> what is good about this Friday? Invite somebody tonight. We're going to be more of in a teaching mode tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Invite somebody. Blessings, anger. Blessings, 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 blessings. Yes, he's not like man. That's why he's called holy. That's why we can trust him. That is why we can trust him. He's holy. You are a man. Yes, no one like him. Invite somebody, people that go. No one like you. No one like you. Why Good Friday? Why is it Good Friday? When in fact, the life of somebody's child was on the line. He was beaten, bruised. Eventually killed. He was crucified because of you and I. What is good about this Friday? Tonight we we'll lay the foundation, and then Sunday morning we we'll conclude. Hallelujah, my God! We will conclude. We we'll lay the foundation tonight, and we we'll see what the Spirit of the Lord does in our midst. Wherever you are, please come with an expectation. Because I believe that, you know, in time and season like this, God is always moving in the midst of his people. No one like you. Invite somebody, invite somebody. Why Good Friday? Why is good about this Friday? Thank you, Jesus. You know, everybody, uh, lots of people are home, not working because of the coronavirus. So now we're going to go as far as we can. Hallelujah. And I know some of you are still working, but it is okay too. Thank you, Jesus. Invite somebody, invite somebody, people that go. Invite somebody, share the video. The least you can do now is just share the video. That is not going to cost you anything. Share the video. I don't want to do like the other people can do. Uh, the five, the first twenty person who share this video, the guesses were so this and that. <laughs> uh, like me, I don't like to do stuff like that. But out of your own kindness, out of your own generosity, you can please share the video. Thank you, Jesus. Who's like you? There is no one like you. Invite somebody. Invite somebody, people of God. Invite somebody, invite somebody, invite somebody, invite somebody. I hope every one of you, you are hearing me very well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good Friday. What is good about this Friday? How can the death, the crucifixion of somebody be celebrated? Hallelujah. There should be a reason behind that. So now we'll lay the foundation. We'll be talking about the power of the blood of Jesus. What is good about this Friday? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Elohim. Thank you, Asian of this. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Asian of this. We bless your name. We give you praise. We give you glory tonight. People of God, as you know, the world is shaking because of this coronavirus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we, you and I will have God. Hallelujah. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. There is nothing that catches our God by surprise. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says He's all knowing. He sees the end from the beginning. Why you, may, you and I may not have been, may not be in tomorrow, He's already dead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing catches Him by surprise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord expose people tonight. The Bible says that everywhere he went, he was doing good. Thank you, Jesus. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Have an expectation tonight that God can change your circumstances around. Even though we'll be talking about Good Friday, hallelujah, anything can happen. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord give us a victory. Thank you, Father. Some of you, it seems there's nothing to be happy about. Amen. Amen. It may seem there's nothing to be excited about. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are the opposite for you. Thank you, Father. Come and manifest yourself. He has set my heart on fire. Thank you, Jesus. This is Good Friday. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody invite somebody tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Elohim. Thank you, Asian of this. Whatever it is you may be going through tonight, people of God, I want you to lay aside for the next few hours and focus on Him and Him alone. There is nothing impossible with our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. There is no like you. Listen of this, we bless your name. Oh, Riki, the Sita Laba Sataba. Ika Rakata Bastia Laba Sataba Kataya. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, O oh God. You are worthy, Jesus. Invite somebody tonight to the word of God. It's going to be power pack. Hallelujah. The dynamite is about to explode tonight. We are talking about the death of our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Did he really have to die? 
Was there any alternative? Thank you, Jesus. We'll be looking at some uh, deep theological answers tonight. Hallelujah. Some of you, your theology will be shaking tonight. And that's okay. And that is okay. Hallelujah. That is okay. That is perfectly fine. Tonight, I don't want you to be so traditional tonight. Because when you are traditional, like you are already settled, you are not open to new ideas, you know. These are people who find themselves in, uh, they already formed, so to speak, like those traditional churches where they believe that the Holy Spirit is no longer, you know, active in these dispensations. I don't want you to be like that. I don't want you to have that mindset tonight. I want you to be open tonight to receive from the throne room of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greetings, 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 people of God, divine guidance family. Those of you watching from Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, North, South America, we want to say you are most welcome. Hallelujah. 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 You are welcome. You are most welcome. I want you to have a strategy in these last days, people of God. Um, you know, many a times, you know, it's kind of natural of a human to always want to hear hope. <laughs> yeah, you always want hope. It's despite of whatever situation, you always want to hear hope. You know, something hopeful. And the hope is good. But uh, I want to say to you that hope is not a strategy. Hope. There are many strategies, but hope is not one of them. Hallelujah. Hope is not a strategy. Hope is not a strategy. Let us pray and we'll go into what the Lord wants to do tonight. Hallelujah. And I will miss. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. This is Good Friday. What is good about this Friday? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we're going to be teaching tonight. It's going to be a little bit philosophical tonight. Uh, we'll make some statements tonight that may not sit right with your theology and your knowledge or your understanding about God. And that's good. Because we will give you some scriptural references, you know, to clear your doubt. Hallelujah. We will not be just throwing things at you that you cannot uh, verify through the, 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 the use of scripture. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for this day. Your people have gathered all across the world. I believe there has never been a time like this in human history where the church, the church, so to speak, Believers have not gathered in their various buildings. Lord, you are speaking loud and clear to us that in these last days, the church is no longer the physical building that people run to, that people go to socialize, Father, for you no longer dwell in physical temples. You have made that transition. In Acts chapter 2, fulfilling Joel chapter 2, verse 28, in, your, in the last days, you poured out your spirit on all flesh. You have poured out your spirit, O oh God, for your people, O oh God, have been still walking in darkness and perceived their building to be the church. But you have spoken loud and clear that you are more about relationship. You are more concerned about relationship than the social gatherings that we call church. Thank you, Father. Do a new thing tonight. Speak, O oh God, to this earthen vessel of clay. I confess tonight my inabilities because you are my sufficiency. Father, do a new thing tonight, O oh God, that all glory, that all honor may be yours and yours alone, Father. Lord, I bring my spirit, my soul, and body under your total subjection tonight. Do that which only you alone can do. Speak, O oh God, to that woman that is hopeless tonight. Speak to that man that has no hope tonight. Speak to that boy. Father, tonight, speak to that single mother that wants to hear, oh God, from your throne of grace tonight. Father, even though we are commemorating your death on the cross, when you came thousands of years ago, Father, you became incarnate, that is God becoming man to dwell among us, Father, for a purpose. You were a man on a mission, a mission of redemption and restoration. Father, tonight I pray, just as you came 7,000 years ago, Jesus, on a mission, I pray, Lord, tonight, 
That man that is in darkness, that boy that is in darkness, that woman that is in darkness, tonight you will speak, O oh God, Father. Oh, my Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let your glory, O oh God, be seen tonight in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. You are welcome, people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know since the fast and prayer, some of you, you haven't heard my voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is all good. It is all good. It is all good. I'm happy to share tonight, uh, this Good Friday. Hallelujah. As we were reminded during the fast and prayer on the 2nd of uh, 2nd of April, uh, the Lord spoke to us uh, in a vision, hallelujah, in a vision that, we received, that I received, he said that the Christian population has been declining over the years. And when I researched that, out of 7.8 billion population on the, walking the earth, it's only 2.3 billion are Christians, hallelujah. And these are people who just call themselves self Christians, hallelujah. And the Lord said to me also that, the Lord said to me also that there's going to be great revival, hallelujah, a great revival that is coming, and uh, the spirit of Billy Graham, the spirit of evangelism was going to be, you know, so eminent in the world that, you know, God was going to anoint a figure, hallelujah, a man with the spirit of, of uh, Billy Graham to evangelize, and the Lord also pointed out a lady uh, who, uh, I didn't know her name, but when I researched her, her name was Amy Sample Memphison, hallelujah, and uh, when I researched her, it says that as of 2000, hallelujah, as of the year 2000, she had a church membership of about 8 million, hallelujah, with 60,000 churches worldwide, hallelujah, and, uh, and uh, God is about to bring about this revival, hallelujah, Looking at the season that we find ourselves in. Now, we're talking about Good Friday. You know, I kind of titled there, what is good about this Friday? This was the day, this was the day that uh, Jesus, the Son of God, endured the cross, came into this world, and was gruesome, beaten, crucified. Crucifixion was, you know, a kind of you know, like somebody will say, low life kind of death. Hallelujah. You know, it was uh, kind of crucif uh, crucifixion was a kind of killing that was so humiliating that, you know, it was not a, the, the, the kind of killing that was done to, you know, uh, 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 people of, of, of integrity. It was so demeaning that if your loved one was crucified those days, that was a shame, that was a disgrace. But here we find the Son of God coming to endure the cross on our behalf. Hallelujah. So Good Friday is not just for the church. And when I say the church, I mean believers. Hallelujah. It is merely for the world. For the church, this day is a period of reflection and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And to the world, and to the and, and uh, to the world, it is a time of hope. Hallelujah. Time of hope. For God so loved the world, the Bible says, it's an elementary scripture, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. So if you are saved, if you are already saved, people of God, this is a time of reflection and thanksgiving. If you are not yet saved, it's a time of hope for you. That, you know, you may be a prostitute. You may be a murderer. You may be a thief. You may be a slanderer. There is, still, there is still hope for you because the Bible says that for God so loved the world, you are still in the world. He has given his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You know, I've, you know, growing up as an elementary Christian, I always used to believe that, you know, Jesus was exclusive to Christians. Hallelujah. But no, he died for the entire world. That's what the Bible says here. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever, so a drunkard can believe in Jesus, and yet he can be saved. The, the, the life of, the, the death of Christ on the cross can bring a meaning to his life. Hallelujah. A murderer 
can believe in Jesus and it can bring a meaning into his life. The Apostle Paul, for example, was a persecutor of the church, but he had his own encounter on his way to Damascus. That was where he met the Lord and Savior Jesus, the one who wrote a vast portion of the gospel, the Bible. Is someone here with me today? So if that is you, in this season, there is hope. There is no such thing as hopeless life if you believe, if you come to Christ. So today, you know, why believers may be celebrating, why believers may be uh, 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 appreciative and extending gratitude and thanks to our Lord and our Savior Jesus, you may be out there and you are not yet entered into the door yet. I am saying to you today that Jesus died for the Buddhists, he died for the Muslims, he died for the Hindus, he died, that's what the Bible says, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For the church today, it's a day of good news because we have experienced the saving grace. Hallelujah. The death of Christ provides. So let us share that good news. Share the good news. Tell somebody who's weeping. Somebody who's, uh, it might be a drunk, an alcoholic, you know, a prostitute. Tell them there is a hope. There is a hope for you. Jesus has died for you on the cross. Hallelujah. And therefore, if you will come with an open heart, open heart, and you are willing to receive, you know, his arms are always open. Hallelujah. He loved us so much. That was the reason why. The Bible says that because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. It was his pleasure to do that. Hallelujah. He wasn't pushed. That was the mission that he came to fulfill. That was the, 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 the purpose for which he came into this world to redeem you and I from the hands of the enemy. So tonight, as we go deeper, you will come to understand, you know, what I am saying right now. Hallelujah. Now, just before we continue, I just want to lay to do certain uh, housekeeping so that you understand the nature of God. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because as we dive deeper into the word of God, you might get lost if you don't understand certain things. That is why I try to, you know, explain those things early on as the foundation so that when we start to build up, you know, and take off, you have clarity and understanding of what we are saying. Hallelujah. Now, we are talking about, we are talking about Jesus' death on the cross. Did he really have to die? This was the son of God, the only son of God. How come? God being God, God being all powerful, yet still. He could not substitute anything else but the life of his son to die for humanity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There must be something greater than this. And I will try by the leading of the spirit to unpack all of these things so that we have clarity tonight. By the time we conclude, you will have an understanding about why Christ had to do what he did. Hallelujah. Why he became incarnate. Hallelujah. Why God became man. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? And uh, we'll be making some statements tonight. I'll be making some statements tonight. Uh, uh, we'll look at the, there is no way we can talk about the death of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Without talking about creation and the fall of man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must understand certain principles in the kingdom. That's what I always say to you that the kingdom is a legal kingdom. Hallelujah. Number one, I want to start with certain basic facts. God cannot break his word. Hallelujah. God cannot break his word. That is why we can trust him, you and I. That's what I played out song earlier on. So that, you know, it's for a reason. United man. Oh, united man. He's not like a man. He cannot take back his word. That is why whenever he speaks, it becomes law. And you and I, we can hold on to those words. You can take it to the bank and cash on it. Hallelujah. You can bet on it because that's what he's going to do. He's not like a man. A man can promise you one thing today. Tomorrow, he changes his mind. Hallelujah. God is not like that. Hallelujah. That's why we, he's called holy. Holiness means he's one with himself. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same tomorrow. He's the same forever. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? I hope you're learning something tonight. I hope you're learning something tonight. And uh, 
like I was saying, we'll talk about creation. So you understand that Christ indeed had to come. Christ indeed had to die. Hallelujah. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. We'll be using, uh, 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 we'll be using uh, uh, the, the uh, Bible app tonight so we navigate faster. Hallelujah. We have a lot to cover tonight by His grace. By His grace. I hope you are open. You are open. Hallelujah. To learn something tonight. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis 1, 26. Genesis 1, 26. You cannot talk about the death of Jesus Christ. You cannot talk about the resurrection without talking about how did this come about? Hallelujah. How did this come about? How did this come about? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. This was creation. The Bible says that, Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, according to, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Hallelujah. So God created man, 27, in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is God speaking. Our Lord and our Savior. Let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness. And he wanted to say, let them have dominion. Now you have to understand here that he did not say, let us have dominion. So he did not include himself. Rather, he excluded himself. Hallelujah. So the dominion, the dominion, the mandate to dominate the earth was placed in the hands of man. Hallelujah. It's important for us to understand this because as we progress, you will understand how the, the, the life of Jesus Christ played into all of this. Hallelujah. Here was God. Here was God. Wanted to create beings like you and I in his image after his likeness. And he wanted you and I, men, to dominate men. It's a spirit being in a physical body. That's, that is man. Hallelujah. Because when God says here, let us make men in our own image and after our own likeness. Now remember, the Bible says that God is spirit. You know? So if we don't establish that God is spirit, you may be thinking that, oh, God is a man like you and I. Hallelujah. Is someone here remain? So the Bible here was speaking about the spiritual image of God. Hallelujah. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Now remember, God said, well, let us make men in our own image. Just look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. It says that, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. Oh my God. That is so powerful. People of God. He created man from the dust. Hallelujah. Created man from the dust. And he didn't stop there. The Bible says he breathed into the nostrils of man. And man became a living soul. My God. That is so powerful. Man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. Now, the same Bible tells us. In, uh, in Leviticus chapter 17, from verse 10 to 14, hallelujah, Leviticus 17, Leviticus 17, that the life of the flesh is in the blood, hallelujah. So, now, God breathed into the nostrils of man here, that's what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 that we just read, hallelujah. And then you see that man became a living soul. Now, that means there was something that transferred to man. Man eventually, that means man had blood. Because the Bible says what? The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, where did the blood of this man come from? Hallelujah. That God just ripped into his nostrils and he, he became a living soul. Hallelujah. The song of Jeremy. So God actually performed two things there. There was the transfer of spirit. Hallelujah. Because God God transferred his spirit into that man when he breathed into his nostrils. And number two, he received blood. Hallelujah. There was blood transmission that took place right there. In some way, here remain. So the first man that was created, it was Adam. It was Adam. Adam was the first man that was created. Adam had no mother from the person we just read here. So God, hallelujah, God created him, breathed into his nostrils, and he became a living soul. 
So if Adam had blood, which was established in a little bit here, that means the blood of Adam came from where? It came from God. Hallelujah. Is someone here with me? I hope you are learning something tonight. And the Bible says what? Like Leviticus uh, 17, verse 10 to 14. Verse 10 to 14. Let me establish something here and then we'll move forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to the point. The point we want to make tonight is did Jesus really have to die? That's the point. We are getting there gradually. But uh, we have to establish creation first and then we'll see what happened. We'll go to the thought of man and how man needed to be redeemed and how Christ had to be involved with that. So we have clarity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter Leviticus 17. Leviticus chapter 17. Leviticus 17. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Leviticus 17. Leviticus 17. Leviticus 17. Hallelujah. Leviticus 17. It says here that the Lord said to Moses, Leviticus 17, let's start from verse 10. Or let's start from verse 1. So that you have understanding. The Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites and say to them, this is what the Lord has commanded any Israelite. No, let's start from verse Let's start from verse 10, so we can shorten that and move forward. It says that, I will set my face against any Israelite or any foreigner residing among them who is blood, who is blood, hallelujah, and I will cut them off from the people. For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make a torment for yourselves. On the altar, no. So, what makes a tomb and people of God is blood. Hallelujah. What makes a tomb is blood. Hallelujah. For the life of the creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make a tomb for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes a tomb for one's life. Hallelujah. Verse 12 says, Therefore, I say to the Israelites, none of you may eat blood, nor may any foreigner. Residing among you eat blood. So don't eat blood, people of God. Don't eat blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. The opposite is true. Death is in the blood. Hallelujah. Death is also in the blood. Hallelujah. We'll speak to that in, in a little while here. Verse 13. Any Israelite or any foreigner residing among you who wants any animal or bird that may be eaten must drain out the blood and cover it with earth. Drain out the blood. And cover it with earth. People of God. Every doctor will tell you. Sickness. The diseases. The sicknesses. They are in the blood. In the blood. The life is in the blood. Cancer for example. Is a blood disease. By the way. Sin. Is a blood disease. Hallelujah. That is why it is generational. Adam. Adam. Thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago. Adam. Hallelujah. Our forefather Adam sinned. And yet, we are still impacted by that. That is why, you see, blood is so, so, so powerful that you don't play with blood. That's why you see people who suffer from a, what is, what is a disease signal called a leukemia. Blood disease, they have to take out the blood. You have need blood transfusion. Take out the blood because your blood is all messed up. They have to put another blood in there. It's over here with cancer. It's the same thing. That's why you see the uh, uh, doctors, when they are doing a, a diagnosis, they will ask for history. Is there anyone in your family that had this sickness? They are referring to bloodline. Hallelujah. So sin is a bloodline disease. Hallelujah. By the way, sin is not limited. Sin is not limited to lying, stealing, killing. Hallelujah. It's over here with sin. Sin, by definition, people of God, sin by definition is disobedience to any governing authority. That's sin. Hallelujah. Disobedience to any governing authority. So here, Jesus is telling, uh, 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 God is telling Moses that the people should not eat blood. Because blood is, the blood was given to them for atonement. Hallelujah. To cover their sins. Hallelujah. And we see that here, God was the first who demonstrated that in the scripture to fulfill that which was written in there. I will just show that to you here. 
Um, let's look at Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Hallelujah. Genesis 2, Genesis 2, 16. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. So you see, blood is so, so, so powerful that sickness can be transmitted through blood. Take for instance, you know, HIV and AIDS. If somebody has HIV and you have HIV, you cannot, the worst person for you to go and get blood from is that person. Hallelujah. The one with the HIV. Hallelujah. So when Adam and Eve sinned, people of God, the entire bloodline of humanity was corrupted. That is why no man was found worthy. No man was found worthy. Hallelujah. God had to fashion a plan. God did not just say, oh, I will just, just hope the situation will get better. Hallelujah. Hope is not a strategy. People of God, hope is not a strategy. Thank you, Father. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. We see that here, after God created the man, God placed the man in the garden and God gave him laws. Hallelujah. Laws are necessary because laws are intended to keep order. Without law, people of God, there will be disorder. Hallelujah. I preach one uh, uh, message and I title, you know, the kingdom concept of laws. Hallelujah. Law is so powerful that if you have the ability to enact laws, law can be a shortcut to your, the long prayer that you pray. Is someone hearing me? That is why today, those of us that have been sitting on the silence in that message are advocated for believers to be involved in leadership, in leading and running the world. Because if you have a godly leader, people of God, you have godly laws. Is someone hearing me? That is why I said to you that I don't subscribe to that philosophy, you know, where people believe that Christians are supposed to sit on the sidelines why the worldly people rule in government, rule the world, hallelujah, and our job is to just sit down and pray. Now, if you have an ungodly leader who is enacting the laws, who's, who's making the laws, hallelujah, you can pray as long as you want. He's going to make the law in his favor, hallelujah. Law is so powerful that it can make something that is immoral to be genuinely acceptable to everyone, hallelujah. That's how powerful law is. So you see here that God himself introduced law. Hallelujah. He put Adam in the garden after creation and he gave him a law. Hallelujah. Now let's see here. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis 2, no, 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 Genesis 2, 16. Genesis 2, 16. Genesis chapter 2, beginning at verse 16. Thank you, Father. The Bible says that, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree, he placed the man in a garden. And he said to him, of every tree, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. You know, God said you can eat of all of the trees in the garden. But please, do not eat of, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For the day you eat, you shall surely die. Now, watch this here. Adam eventually ate of this tree. Hallelujah. We'll see, we'll see in uh, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. But then something happened. The same Bible says in Genesis chapter 5, verse 5, that after Adam and Eve ate the fruit, the Bible says that Adam lived for 930 years before he died. So, was God lying? <laughs> My God. That's what I said. We will look at deep theological thoughts tonight. Hallelujah. Was God lying? No. He's not like man. Not a son of man that he should repent. He cannot lie. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? So, what the, the death that God was talking about was not a physical death. Is someone hearing me? It was spiritual death. So, yes, indeed. The day Adam ate and disobeyed God, as far as God is concerned, they died that day. Hallelujah. That is why when you see, as we read further, he came in the garden and said, Adam, where are you? He was not talking that question, where are you? It's not about physical location. It was, it was a question of disposition. 
Hallelujah. There's someone here with me. That's why God meant when he asked Adam, Adam, where are you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And when you look at Genesis chapter 2, 18, that was when he created the, the helpmate. Uh, uh, Eve, Eve was created. The man was put to sleep. And the Lord took the rib from him and uh, created his helpmate. Hallelujah. Uh, in Genesis 2, 21. Hallelujah. You know, God put him to he, God made a statement in Genesis 2, 18. That it is not good for men to be alone. He didn't say it's not good for men to be lonely. Adam was not lonely. There's a difference between the two. Adam was not lonely. Hallelujah. So in Genesis 2, 21, God created a man, and they were both together, Adam and Eve were in the garden, and Adam, Adam said something that is so powerful. Adam said, now this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Hallelujah. Adam, Adam was happy. Hallelujah. He had somebody, he had a companion, and he went on to name her woman. Hallelujah. If you read down, follow that passage, it says that for it is therefore for this reason that a man will leave his father and his mother and will cling to his wife. Hallelujah. And they shall become one. No wonder why. No wonder why. Man is always, a man is always looking for his rib. Hallelujah. So let us look at the fall of man. Now, the fall of man here, hallelujah, is, is man breaking the laws of God. Hallelujah. That's the whole essence of sin disobedience to a governing authority hallelujah that's the whole essence here and you will see how this narrative finally links jesus into it now all of this was planned from the very beginning god saw all of this coming hallelujah that's why the bible is referred to it as the, the lamb of god that was slain from the foundation of the world hallelujah but it was beginning to unfold here before the eyes of god hallelujah and don't tell me that God didn't know that these people were having this, uh, Eve was having this conversation with Satan, hallelujah, because he's omniscient, hallelujah, he's all-knowing, he's omnipotent, hallelujah, he's everywhere at all times, so God saw all of this uh, uh, interaction going on, but why God did not interfere, why did he, why did he not intervene, people of God, hallelujah, because what? He's faithful to his word. Hallelujah. He said what? Let death have dominion over the earth. Meaning man, you and I. So Adam and Eve, why is it is true that he, he, he had the conversation. He saw everything. He could not interfere. People of God, had God interfered, you and I could no longer trust him. Hallelujah. Because he what? He has given the dominion mandate at the, at the moment to men. Therefore, he cannot interfere in it. That is why I always tell you that whatever happens on earth depends on you and I. Hallelujah. That's why some people will ask, oh, if this your God is so good, how come there's genocide over there? How come uh, people are killed, somebody just killed them, shot their friend over there? Hallelujah. Now, that's why I, 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 thought, uh, I thought of prayer. Hallelujah. Why do we pray? Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing me? Why do we pray? If God, if God, if God, if God, if God is all powerful, hallelujah. Why, if it's all powerful, why do we pray? If he can do whatever he wants to do, like some people say, he can do whatever he wants to do, then why should we pray? Prayer will be useless, hallelujah. That's one of the answers to that. Why is it that God did not interfere? Because what? He has dedicated the earth to men. To rule, to dominate, hallelujah. And therefore, as we go forward, I will establish the fact also that was, it was from that standpoint for which he could not interfere. He could not stop the transaction, hallelujah. And even God coming into this world had to take on a body, take on a body, had to go through the same process that you and I went through. He had to be born of a woman, hallelujah. And someone hearing me because what? Those are his laws that he has put in place. And because of his faithfulness, he cannot violate his word. Hallelujah. He cannot violate his word. Whenever he speaks, it becomes law. And besides, he's a, he's a spirit. Is someone hearing me? He's a spirit. He's a spirit. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll expand on that. We'll expand on that. Genesis chapter 3, 
the fall of man, beginning at verse 1, we'll read the entire chapter so we can understand or unpack some of the things here. And then we will take off, and I believe that you will, see, you will have a picture of where we are, where we are headed. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 3, it talks about the temptation and the fall. It says that, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now you see the devil. He's twisting the word of God. Now, earlier on, you read, we read that the Lord said to Adam, Of all the trees you can eat, but not of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now the devil is twisting it. So God said you shouldn't eat of any of the trees. You see? That's how, you know, the devil will always trick you. By twisting the word of God. Twisting the word of God. And the woman said to the serpent, Now, the devil is not snake. He's not snake. Hallelujah. The devil is a spirit. Because he was in heaven. Can someone hear me? So he came down, possessed the body of the snake. Hallelujah. Is someone hear me here? That was the only way he was in the physical to be able to interact with the physical beings, Adam, uh, uh, Eve, is someone hearing me? That was exactly what happened here. So, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, to the, the, said to the woman, you will not surely die, you see, God said that she will die. They will die when they eat it. The devil is saying, you won't, you won't die. Does that sound familiar? Sometimes you want to do certain things, you know. The, the devil is speaking to you. You, want to, you know it is wrong. And yet, he's enticing you. He's pushing you to do it. Now, you come to understand here that the devil had no power whatsoever to kill Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. So he had one plan in mind. And that plan was to cause Adam and Eve to disobey God. Because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Hallelujah. For the wages of sin is death. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. So in order to kill them, hallelujah, in order to kill them, he should make, you have to make them disobey God. Because when you disobey God, the penalty, the reward you get is death. So that was what that was his plan. That's what the Bible calls him the accuser of his bird of the brethren. So you see here that as you read this passage, he eventually enticed them and they ate of the fruit. Hallelujah. You know, they ate of the fruit. At that moment, instantaneously, they were dead. They lost the Holy Spirit. They lost the presence of God. They lost their kingdom. They lost the dominion mandate. Hallelujah. Now, what brings Jesus into this here? Into this thing here? Because God wanted to colonize the earth through humans, you and I. Now, because these, uh, 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 Adam, these individuals, our forefathers, Adam and Eve, have claimed their independence, God could no longer do that to them. All they deserved was death. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? All they deserve was death. And because the word of God cannot be broken, God cannot take back his word. So, he had to make sure that Adam and Eve died. Is someone hearing me? He had to make sure that Adam and Eve died. Because that's why he said, the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Hallelujah. Now, that brings Jesus in the picture. That brings Jesus in the picture. But just before that, you see that God pronounced curses. Upon all three of them, all three of them, all three of them. Let me read so you understand something thing here. You will see that God pronounced curse over the devil, God pronounced curse on the woman, and God pronounced curse concerning the man also. Hallelujah. So, verse 6 is that. So, when the woman saw that the tree was good for, for food, that it was pleasant, it was pleasant to the eyes, and it pleasant to the eyes, and a tree. Desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. Many a times, 
The things that we see so pleasant to the eyes, attractive. Those are the things that lure us. Those are the things that cause us to fall. And the head, and the Bible says that, so the, 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 and the, the eight, verse eight, it says that, and they heard the sound of the Lord, of the Lord God, walking in the garden in the, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now watch this here. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Adam, where are you? Like I said earlier, it was not a, a question asking about the position, but rather disposition. They were out of position with God. That was he was asking. Where are you? Not a physical location. Because God is all known. He knew you exactly where he could see them. Hallelujah. That's why many a times, you know, people think you can hide from God. No, impossible. He sees all things. None of that nowadays, the new righteousness, the new holiness is if you can conceal your deed from men, then you are holy. Hallelujah. The one you should be hiding from is God. And it's impossible for you to hide from him. Verse 10 says, so he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the, from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? God was asking them. Then the man said, then the, then the man said, the woman who you gave to me, hallelujah, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me the tree. And I ate the, the, the tree and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What have you done? The woman said to him, She said, It's the serpent. That's the blame game. Nobody wants to take responsibility. Hallelujah. Nobody wants to take responsibility. Adam is saying, God, it's your fault. The woman that you gave me caused me to sin. The woman is saying, It is the serpent. Hallelujah. Then watch this and why God says it. God says, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle. Hallelujah. For, uh, verse 14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, God was cursing the serpent now, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall, you shall go. Hallelujah. On your belly you shall go. And you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head. And you shall bruise his heel. Now, this was a prophetic, prophetic uh, statement here. God was saying to the serpent, the woman you just used, the woman you just caused to break my word, to sin against me, to, to break, you know, my laws, I will put anything between your seed and her seed. Hallelujah. That woman that, that God was talking about, people of God, that was Mary. That child that God was talking about, that was our Lord and our Savior Jesus. God was saying here, now, the, the, the devil, when he, the last time I talked to you about the, the, the loss of territory, God, no spirit being, is permitted to function on the earth without a body. Hallelujah. And so hear me. And therefore, the, the devil can possess the body of the serpent, thereby making him leave God. To do transaction on the earth. So God was saying, I'm going to come to the earth legally to the womb of a woman and I'm going to bruise your hand. Speaking of our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? I hope we are learning something tonight. So, the stage was set. The stage was set. And uh, verse 16, it says that to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrows and your, your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Hallelujah. And let's go to, uh, 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 let's go to verse, uh, verse 20 so that you understand something here. Because here, you see that, you know, in a justice system of, in a justice system of God, when a person sins, hallelujah, when a person commits sin, what covers your sin? What pays for the sin? Hallelujah. Is blood. People of God. So the Bible says that Adam and Eve, they so fit leaves for themselves. They so fit leaves for themselves to cover their sin. Not knowing that fig leaves does not cover sin. Because when the sun rises up, 
the weather gets hot, the fig leaves wait us. Hallelujah. So God did something here in Genesis chapter 3 from verse 20. It says, and Adam called his wife named Eve because, no, verse 21. It says also, for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tonics of skin and clothed them. Hallelujah. He made tonic of skin. He killed an animal, took the skin and clothed them. Hallelujah. In blood, people of God. In this passage here, it was not the skin that is important. What's important? It is the blood that the, that the skin contained that covered them. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. That without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. Now, that brings Jesus into the whole narrative. Is someone hearing me here? So you come to understand that when, when God made this first move, kill an animal, hallelujah, the first time blood spilled, hallelujah, kill an animal, took the skin of the animal, clothed Adam and Eve in that blood, hallelujah, cover their sin temporarily. Because what? Guess what? The, when Adam and Eve fell, the entire bloodline of humanity was corrupted, hallelujah, was corrupted. So now, what it could take to cover men's sin was, was just blood. Hallelujah. It will only take the blood of a perfect being, of a perfect man, hallelujah, to take away the sins of humanity once and for all. Is someone hearing me here? So God was making a statement. So you will come to understand that when you read Leviticus, Leviticus, a priest who was set up, Hebrews chapter 9 talks about that also. Hallelujah. As we will read, as we will read further, you will see that without the shedding of blood, sin cannot be forgiven. Hallelujah. Sin cannot be forgiven. That's how it works in the justice system of God. It takes blood for sin to be forgiven. That is why the, the, the Leviticus priest in, 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 in Leviticus 14, you will see that when a leper was to be cleansed, blood was applied. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? That's how Jesus had to come into this world, people of God. Because you will see that when we read Leviticus chapter 9, you will see that the priest, the Bible says that once every year, the priest will enter into the holy place. He will offer blood for his sins, blood for the sins the people have committed in ignorance. Hallelujah. Every year you have to go and do that. Can you imagine if you and I we're still living under that dispensation, under that law, people of God. How much blood will be spilled year after year, year after year, year after year? They have to do the same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But John chapter 1, verse 29 to 31, John said what? Behold, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. The sin of humanity had to be dealt with, had to be... Uh, 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 removed once and for all. And the only way that could have been possible, people of God, it had to be done through a perfect man. Now watch this. Creation was already finished. God has finished creation. No man was found worthy. Hallelujah. To, to take away our sin. It had to take the life of a perfect being. Hallelujah. That is why Jesus had to come. Hallelujah. Jesus had to come. Because had Christ had come, people of God, like the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. You and I, we deserve death. Hallelujah. And like I said earlier, sin is a blood disease. That is why the, 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 the sin, sin runs through the bloodline. Hallelujah. That's why a child who is born today, that is five years old, three years old, you don't have to teach them how to, you know, be envious of their brother, envious of their sister. And it didn't go far. Genesis chapter 4. We see that a, 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 a king uh, killed his brother Abel. Hallelujah. King killed his brother Abel. Because what? Sin had entered the blood, the, 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 the human race. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 4, two brothers, king was a, was a farmer. Abel. Hallelujah. Abel was a shepherd. So they both went to worship God. King probably carried uh, carry his... Uh, Carries a, a banana, a, 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 a
broccoli, tomatoes, onions, and all those stuff. He probably bought those. And that's why he was a farmer. Hallelujah. And he probably, when he saw Abel with his, with his uh, sheep, with his lamb going, he probably was mocking him. Say, ah, look, I have uh, how many fruits I have. And you, you wouldn't have a, you wouldn't have a lamb. You know? People of God, in the justice of God, the currency that paid for our sins is blood. Now that a, a king understand that his four, his five, his parents, when Adam and Eve sinned, vegetables could not cover them. God made a statement, killed an animal, took the blood, took the skin of the animal, and clothed them. Abel probably understood something. That's why he brought his sheep and he offered it. And at that, the Bible says that the prayer, the, the, the sacrifice of Abel was accepted and kings was rejected. How do we know? Throughout the Old Testament, when you read your Bible, you come to understand that whenever, whenever an altar was built and a sacrifice was placed upon the altar, an acceptable sacrifice, most of the time it was animal. That is why God told Abraham to take his son to go and sacrifice him upon the altar, upon on the mountain. Because what? He had blood. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? You cannot enter the presence of God without blood. Hallelujah. You cannot be restored. Hallelujah. Your sins cannot be forgiven without the shedding of blood. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews 9 22. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. So you see that throughout the Leviticus priesthood, before Christ could come, before Christ could come, every year, the people went, offered sacrifices. That is why even when you read, uh, when you read the book of uh, Exodus, hallelujah, the Passover, the Passover, Every land, people of God, throughout the Old Testament that were killed, those were prophetic land, symbolic of Christ. That's why the Bible says that during the Passover, the Lord spoke to Moses and tell the people that let each one take a lamb for a household. Hallelujah. Slaughter the lamb. Take the blood of the lamb and apply it on the doorpost of the lentil. And the Lord says that I am passing judgment through on the Egyptians. And he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. People of God, we're about to be celebrating Passover. We're about to be celebrating Pass Passover. Blood is so powerful in the justice system of God. What can, what can cover sin is blood. What can take away your sin is blood. Hallelujah. In some way, hearing me here. But throughout the Leviticus priesthood, all the, 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 all the, the animals that were killed could only temporarily cover sins. Hallelujah. Because what? The blood of bulls and bulls and calves were not pure enough. Hallelujah. It had to take the blood of a perfect being. People of God, that is why our, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ had to come into this world and do the cross to redeem you and I from that eternal, re, uh, 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 that eternal damnation. Is someone hearing me here tonight? Is someone hearing me tonight? Hallelujah. 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 And the Bible says, uh, let's look at uh, 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 let's look at uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 8. It says that, now this is the main point of the things. We are, uh, 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 we are saying, we have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of, of, majesty, of the majesty in heaven, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected, and not man. Hallelujah. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one also have something to offer our Lord. Because the, the priests, they were entitled to offer something. If it wasn't incense, if it wasn't blood, they were offering something. Our own high priest, our Lord, our Savior Jesus, had to offer something as well. For if he were on earth, he would not be priest. Hallelujah. He will not be a priest. Since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law, who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things. Hallelujah. Now, the tabernacle that was set up here on earth was not the real deal. Hallelujah. The real tabernacle was in heaven. 
because every tabernacle had priests. Hallelujah. Jesus is the high priest in the true tabernacle in heaven. Now, if you read here in Leviticus, uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 9, that's how the real verse 1, will draw a contrast between the earthly tabernacle and the heavenly tabernacle. So you understand something here. It says that, then indeed, this is Hebrews chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 9. Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary, for a tabernacle was prepared. The first part in which was the lampstand, the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary, and behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had a golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, the manna that they ate in the, in the, in, 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 in the wilderness, it had the manna. And Aaron's rod that bought it, and the tablets of the and the tablets of the covenant, and above it were the was the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in details. Hallelujah. We cannot now speak in details. Now, when these things were being thus prepared, the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle, performing the services. But into the second part, the high priest went alone once a year. He went there only once every year. Not with our blood, hallelujah, we're talking about blood again. Not with our blood, which he offered for himself, because he was a man. He has sinned, hallelujah. Definitely he had to be cleansed. If he wasn't clean, those days he was stricken dead, hallelujah. He offered the blood for, his, uh, for himself and for the people's sin committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicated this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. It was symbolic of the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience, concerned only with foods and drink, various washings, and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. Now, Christ had not come yet. Christ had not come yet. God has provided for us a temporary means by which we cannot be smitten. We cannot, you know, humanity could not die. Hallelujah. So he pro made this provision that the blood of bulls, that the blood of goats, that the blood of calves, of calves were used to temporarily cover our sins. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me here? Now let us look at the heaven, the, the, the heavenly tabernacle. It says that, but Christ, that, that's a Hebrew chapter 9, from verse 11. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle. Hallelujah. Not made with human hands. That is, not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place, people of God, once for all. Now, look at this. The every tabernacle, the priest had to go every year. Every year, he had to offer blood. The blood he was offering, it wasn't even his own blood. It was the blood of bulls. It was the blood of, of calves. Hallelujah. That he was offering. That's a contrast here. So the Bible says here that Christ didn't have to do that. Hallelujah. Not with the blood of bulls and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, only one time. Having obtained the eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and bulls and, and calves, hallelujah, the ashes of hyper, sprinkling the unclean. Sacrifice for the purifying, hallelujah, for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator, hallelujah, of the new covenant by means of death. 
for the redemption of transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Hallelujah. This is Christ Jesus, the put of God. A man with a spotless blood. Now I told you earlier, sin is a blood disease. Hallelujah. Like I said, the analogy that I get, a person with an HIVAs, two persons with HIVAs, can that give each other blood? It will help you. Hallelujah. When Adam sinned, humanity had fallen. We became fallen creature. Our blood contaminated. Hallelujah. No human being, no man born of a woman was qualified to have a spotless blood. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, became incarnate. Hallelujah. That is God becoming man. Just to redeem you and I. People of God, you want to thank God for this good Friday that you and I see it like this. Let me draw, paint a picture for you. Like it's as if you, you committed a crime and they brought you before the judge. Hallelujah. And you are pronounced guilty. And you're supposed to behave or sentence to death. And by the time the judge entered the room, the court room, to read the verdict, people of God, all of a sudden, a man just showed up. And the judge went like, who are you? And he said, I am Jesus. Let him go. Hallelujah. That was exactly what happened for you and I. We deserved death. We were enemies of God. And Jesus came to breach that gap. Hallelujah. And so what you mean? That is why he's the perfect lamb of God that John talks about in John chapter 1. Verse 29, uh, John 1, 29 to 31. He said, this, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the, of the world. Now, Jesus is the only mediator between man and God. Hallelujah. Now, look at this. Look at uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 16. It says that for where there is a test, where there is a testament, there must also be of necessity. Hallelujah. There must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Hallelujah. For a testament is in is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all. Why the testator lives? Hallelujah. See like this. I have a will. Okay. I have a will. A written will. Okay. You may have a will. Now, that will has no power until you are dead. Hallelujah. It's so inherent. So Christ had to die. That the covenant might my live. My Hallelujah. So Christ's death brought restoration to us. Christ's death brought deliverance to us. Christ's death brought back. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. That is why when, 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 when Adam and Eve sinned, the Holy Spirit left. Through all your Bible, when you read the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit will only come upon a person to perform a task. Those are the, the Holy Spirit came upon the king, the priest, and the prophet. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? And the Holy Spirit will come upon a person. The person prophesies. Boom. The Holy Spirit leaves. Until Joel chapter 2 verse 28. Which talk about in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Promising the restoration of the Holy Spirit. That was only possible through the death of Christ. Hallelujah. Because you and I, we were so much contaminated that we could no longer host the presence of the Holy Spirit until Christ came. That is why the Bible says that he was spotless and he had the presence, he had the Holy Spirit without measure. That's why when he went to baptize in, the, in Luke Gospel, after his baptism, the Bible says the heavens opened and the Lord spoke and said, this is my beloved son, the one in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended upon him. Hallelujah. In the form of a dove. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. In the form. It took the form of a dove and descended upon him. And the Lord announced him. This is my beloved son. The one in whom I am well pleased. And you come to see that after his, the, the baptism of Christ, he did marvelous things. Because what? 
He had the presence of the Holy Spirit. He had the whole Holy Spirit with him. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit did not come on a man until after his death. People that God come Sunday. Hallelujah. Coming Sunday. Today is the day of crucifixion. The enemy thought that, you know, killing him, taking him to the cross was the end of him. Hallelujah. People of God. Not knowing, not knowing, it was the path to his glory. Some of you, they crucify you. They said things about you that are not true. You are weeping. You have become bitter. You have become furious. Hallelujah. It might be a path to your glory. That's what the Bible says that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. The cross was painful. The cross caused him agony to the point where he asked his father. He said, Father, if it is possible, pass, let, it, let this cup pass away from me, people of God. He saw the gruesome death that was ahead of him. People of God, they seen Jesus. They seen Jesus that came and died for you and I to give us life, to give us the abundant life, so to speak. This same Jesus will certainly come again. Hallelujah. Sunday morning, come. We are talking about the resurrection. Tonight, today, was the day that he was crucified. And the Bible says that there was a black out, and there was thunder and lightning, people of God. And so when he read, and he was buried, he was buried on the second day, to the point that his disciples, they were all scattered. Hallelujah. Some of them, they left their fishing professions. They left their farming profession. Hallelujah. To follow Jesus. But when, he's, when he was crucified, there was, there was no hope. There was no hope whatsoever. Some of you, you are like that today. There is no hope everywhere you look. Most especially in this time. In this season of the coronavirus, the world has been shut down. You know, government shut down. A, a church buildings shut down. Businesses shut down. People of God, this same Jesus has promised that he will come back. Hallelujah. And so, on, so, on Sunday morning, please come. I don't want to get there. Hallelujah. I don't want to spoil the party for you. So come on Sunday morning. Let's see what happens. People of God. Now, you come to understand that Jesus, Jesus' death, the Bible says that after his death, he ascended into the heavens, not with the blood of bulls and bulls and cats, but with his own blood. Hallelujah. His own blood. To secure our eternal redemption. By his blood, you and I, we are redeemed from the hands of the enemy. That's what the Bible says. What? Let them say so. Whom he has redeemed from the hands of the enemy. Angels were not redeemed. People of God. You and I were redeemed. Therefore, you and I, we have the legal right to apply the blood. Because what? We are the redeemed of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, Leviticus 17, that I said to you, that I read to you earlier. Leviticus 17, verse 10 to 14. Believers were cautioned. The children of Israel were cautioned not to drink blood. People of God. Because it says what? The life of the the, the, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So don't drink blood. Now let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something here. Let me show you something. Look at uh, look at John chapter let's look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6. God caution. God caution the people not to drink blood. But then watch what Jesus did here. John chapter 6. Hallelujah. Because what? Every blood the blood of the animals, the blood of every other being was contaminated. It's contaminated. But then watch. Let me show you the kind of the kind of blood that he wants you to drink. Ah, John chapter 6. He wants you to drink a particular blood. Let me show you. John chapter 6. Hallelujah. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Beginning of verse 53. John chapter 6. Beginning at verse 53, John chapter 6, verse 53, from 53 to 58, from 53 to 58, hallelujah. He says here that Jesus said to them, 
Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh. Now, you remember Leviticus 17, verse 10, from verse 10 to 14. He said, you shouldn't drink blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shouldn't drink blood. But well, that's what you're saying here for the first time. Jesus said to them, very, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. This is Jesus now. He said the only blood, the only flesh that is secure for you to eat and drink, hallelujah, it is the blood of Jesus and it is the flesh of Jesus, hallelujah. I hope you got your communion emblems tonight, people of God. You, I hope you have your communion emblem. We're going to partake of the blood. Hallelujah. Get your communion emblems. Hallelujah. For the first time, for the first time, after he said in, Revel in Leviticus 17, 10 to 14, you should not drink blood. Hallelujah. Jesus is now saying, the blood that you should drink, he said, is his blood. The flesh you should eat is his flesh. He said, what? Well, unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have no life. Remember, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, he has he was giving you an eye. Blood transfusion. Is someone hearing me? Because our blood, our, our blood had been contaminated. That is why we need blood transfusion. People of God. The blood destroys the work of death in you and I. Is someone hearing me? It destroys the penalty. Of death in you and I. That's why he says here. Jesus said to them, Matthew chapter 6, 53 to 58. 53 to 58. Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And the same Bible says in Leviticus chapter 17, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So Jesus is giving you and I life. Hallelujah. He came to give us life. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? Blood transfusion, blood transfusion. He's giving unto us. I hope you have your communion emblems. We're about to partake. This is Good Friday, people of God. Those of you in the world, hallelujah. You may be a sinner tonight, you may be in prison tonight, and you have access to the device and you are watching from the forgotten corners of the world. The world has forgotten you, terror is back on you, has condemned you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! There is, there is life. More than this life that we live in. That's what I want you to count on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Because it was when Jesus validated his deity, which gives a true meaning to Christianity. Hallelujah. It validated the resurrection was what validated his claim as being the child of God, the son of God. Hallelujah. Jesus was 100% man, 100% God in the inside. And the devil does, didn't know how, how to handle that one. Hallelujah. So Jesus was saying here, Jesus said here in, in John chapter 6, verse 53, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. People of God, you are talking about coronavirus. The blood of Jesus is so powerful that, my God, my God, can you imagine? That's what the Bible said earlier. If the blood of bulls and goats and cow could cover people's sins, what more than the blood of Jesus? The blood of the Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hope you have your communion evidence. Hallelujah. Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Eternal life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. And Jesus proved that, that on Sunday, Come on Sunday, hallelujah. The only religion where the, the where where the, the how do you call it the, the only religion the only religion where the 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 the, 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 the how do you call it? what's the terminology for that? The organizer, so to speak, died for the followers. Hallelujah. The leader died for the followers is Christianity. The only religion that the leader Died for the followers. And the leader predicted his death. And the leader predicted that he will come back to life. Is Christianity. In my opinion, Christianity is the only is saved. Is saved to be a Christian. Than to be anything else. To be a part of any other religion. 
because our leader proved what he proved his claim. His claim was proven on the third day of resurrection. That's what I want you to come on resurrection money. You hear some things that you never heard before. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the, eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Jesus came to give you and I the life, people of God. He said you have no life, and we saw that when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, disobeyed the, the authority of God, they claimed their independence, and what they deserve, what you and I deserve, was death. For the wages of sin, the pay for sin is death. That's what the Bible says in, in, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And it says that in Hebrews 9, 22, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So the blood of Jesus came to take away our sin, came to restore us to the Father, came, he also came to give back to us. That way we lost the dominion mandate, the mandate to dominate the earth, people of God. That is our divine inheritance that he came to give unto us. Hallelujah. And here, he did not end there. Through his blood, he said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have life. If you don't eat, you have no life in you whatsoever. For my flesh is real food. Oh my God. And my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father. So, the one who feeds on me will live because of me. 58. This is the bread that came down from heaven, my God. Your ancestors ate manna. They ate manna. You know, when they were coming out of Egypt, they ate manna. You and I, we are feasting on the body and on the blood of Jesus. He says what? This is what gave you an island. But whoever feasts on this bread will live forever. You and I, we are eternal. Hallelujah. We are eternal. Jesus proved that. Jesus proved that. You know, this life that we live in is not all there is. Hallelujah. He proved that. That was when he was crucified on the third day. Resurrection Sunday. Come, 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 come. People of God. This hour, I want you to take your, take your communion. Hallelujah. We'll bless it. We'll bless it. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Before we pray for the communion tonight. Thank you, Father. 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Beginning at verse 23. This is the Apostle Paul. At verse 23. He says that, for I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, yes, this is our Lord and our Savior. On the night he was betrayed, the same night he was betrayed, he did this, people of God. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. Get your communion ready, people of God. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. He took bread. Hallelujah. Paul says what? He took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your word. Say, O oh God, the night that you were betrayed, you took bread and you broke it. And you said, This is my body, which is broken for you. He said, well, take this, eat. And he said, do it as often as you, you, uh, as you can in remembrance of me. People of God, as I pray for this bread, partake of it. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we have come. Your people have gathered tonight in faith. Lord, you said we should do this as often as we, as we can in remembrance of your work on the cross. This is your body. As we partake of your body this night, Father, tonight, whatever sickness that cannot be traced back to your body cannot be traced back to us. Every sickness, disease, Father, even 
of a BA cancer is RDNA leukemia. Whatever it is, by your divine power tonight, Lord, there is no record of you sneezing one day in scripture. I pray, oh God, Father, just as you said, either eat, or eat of my body and drink of my blood, you have life. You say you have everlasting life. Father, that which, oh God, Father, is present in your body, let it be activated tonight, oh God, as your people partake of your body. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. Take the bread and eat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 25, it says that in a same way, my God, my God, something supernatural is happening right now. As you are chewing on that bread, people of God, thank you, Father. I see sicknesses disappearing tonight. My God. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank you, Father. Tonight, Father, Lord, this is the new covenant in your blood. You came, O oh God, into this world to redeem us, to restore us unto you. Lord, you became incarnate. You became a man. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, tonight. As we partake of your blood, we pray, Spirit of the living God, that which, O oh God, Father, the blood in us, O oh God, Father, that has been contaminated, be it sin, be it sickness, be it disease, whatever blood disease it is, oh God, let it be destroyed tonight by the power in your blood. You came, oh God, to give us trans a blood transmission because sin is a blood disease experienced throughout ages from generation to generation. Father, through your blood, you brought restoration. Tonight, as your people partake, as we partake of your blood tonight, Father, Lord, oh God, Father, we do this in remembrance of you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. You may drink, you may partake of it. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift up his name. Just bless his name, whatever you are. Whatever you are, just bless his name. Just bless his holy name. Just bless his holy name. Just bless his holy name. You and I, we deserve death. Hallelujah. We deserve death. We deserve death. But through the death, through the, through the, the substitutionary death of Christ on the cross, hallelujah, he redeemed us. He purchased us. He brought us back. Hallelujah. Some of us, you know, we all have history. We all have past. Tonight, whatever it is, whatever it is, you may not be a believer. You may be watching tonight. If you would pray this prayer with me and accept Jesus, just like the elementary scripture says that for God so loved the world, John 3 says that he gave his only begotten son. So he was given for the world. That means those who are not yet saved. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? And for us who have given our life, our lives to him, let us keep on walking on that path of holiness, purity, sanctification. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? So if you, if you're watching me, then you want to give your life tonight. You be watching from Pakistan, from India, Liberia, Yasaka, the small village where I was born. You know, wherever you're watching from tonight, and you know all around you, you know that if should Christ come today, there will be no hope for you. You are not sure of your eternal destiny. You want to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord, dear Lord Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you keep into this world and you die for my sin. I now accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. People of God, if that is you, you have prayed that prayer. You believe that you just got born again. Find a Bible believing church and get on an 
an amazing journey that God wants to take you on. Hallelujah. I want to pray for all of everyone that's watching me tonight. I know the world is shaking, it's sadding. You know, when you watch the news, it's so disheartening. You see, uh, this afternoon I was looking at a video of, uh, uh, I think it was Miami Airport, and everywhere is empty. So much going on across the world. If you turn on the news, you know, you'll be hearing, you know, report of fear and intimidation. Hallelujah. Fear and intimidation. It looks like it's not getting any better. Hallelujah. But God is in control. God is in control. As you partake of the blood, we believe that you are covered. Your family is covered. Those of you working, working in the healthcare, uh, um, healthcare field, we are praying for you each and every day. We believe that God will keep you in this season. The sacrifice that you are making, you have to go. While people are running away from the virus, some of you, you have to confront it, you know, firsthand. It's our favorite prayer that God will sustain you. Just make sure you say your prayer before you go to work. Anoint yourself. Hallelujah. Make declaration. The Bible says that the prayer of the righteous may avail much. And you and I, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We were redeemed by his blood. Hallelujah. That's why I love the song that says, what has the power to take away your sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You just partook of the blood of Jesus. And he says, what is what? Do it as often as you can. You know, we have a whole box, two boxes of this in our house. You know, some of you do the same. Partake of the blood. The blood is so powerful that when you read Revelation chapter 12, you will see that it was the blood that defeated the enemy. Satan. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 12. When you read that passage, you will see that Michael, the Bible says that there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel, the warring angel, they fought. Satan and his angel, and the Bible says they, they could not prevail. And he said, and they defeated him by the power of the blood and by the words of their testimonies. Testimonies are so powerful, people of God. Testimonies, testimonies are so powerful. Testimonies are so powerful. So, as you, as you are partaking of the Holy Communion, Tonight, I believe that transformation is coming into your lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because what? Jesus came to bring restoration, to give unto us that which we lost during the fall. When Adam fell, we lost dominion. We lost the presence of the Holy Spirit. We lost the presence of God. Hallelujah. And so we hear me. And that was what Christ came to give unto us. And if you read that passage, Genesis chapter 3, you will see that, you know, most men, you talk to them when they are going through some difficulty, different uh, hardship, you say, oh, God cares all the men don't read your Bible. God cares the grammar. And by the way, when Christ was beating his blood that spilled on the ground, broke the curse. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? So try to walk in victory. But the devil is pre presenting things to you that is contrary. Some of you, your marriage, you, you, you're having challenges in your relationship, challenges in your finances, challenges in your businesses. People of God, you want to hold on to the finished work of the cross. You hold on to the finished work of the cross, people of God. Jesus said, it is finished. Hallelujah. He said, kill our eternal redemption. The Bible says he entered into heaven's most holy place, not with the blood of bulls and goats and calf, but with his own blood. Hallelujah. There's a fountain of blood, people of God, pulled upon the altar that secure our eternal redemption. That is why he says in his word that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever called upon my name shall be saved. What secures that? It is the blood of Jesus. Is someone hearing me tonight? It is my favorite prayer. Those of you that are panicking, so to speak, in a, in a trying time like this, hallelujah, don't panic. Don't panic. Our God is in control. This situation did not take him by surprise. He's not surprised. He will take it on his own. Just as he kept the children of Israel in Egypt. Did you know that all the time the various plagues were coming? There's a place called Goshen where the children of Israel were dwelling. The Bible says that what Moses, the Lord spoke to Moses, he says, stand before Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go that they may worship. Hallelujah. 
And so we heard it. And he said that if he refuses to let my people go, there will be swines of flies in his household and in the household of his servants. But there shall be no swines of fly in Goshen, where my people live. And God did not stop there. He said, I will make a clear distinction between his people and my people. People of God. That is why during the fast and prayer, I told you, you want to come close to God more than ever before. Because what? He's your shield of protection in these last days, in these difficult times that we find ourselves. People of God, I want you to be very, 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 you know, cautious. In these last days, walk circumspectly, walk with vision. Stop uh, hoping, you know, hope is not a strategy. Hallelujah. Hope is not a, stra it's not a strategy. It's so we hurry. When, when, when humanity fell, God did not just say, oh, I will just sit there and I hope they will get it right. No, he fashioned a plan. You know, you want to have a plan for your family in these last days. You know, the world is never going to get better like the better that like you and I know. Hallelujah. We are headed towards great tribulation. We are headed towards the second coming of Christ. Those who believe that church was the building, God, was, God has summoned everybody. Hallelujah. God has summoned everyone. Be it a pope, whatever, you know, where are they today? Hallelujah. God is making a statement that he is the owner of this world, not man. You know, they will tell you all kinds of things. Some of them, they have made themselves gods. Some churches, the pastors have made themselves gods because they have found themselves within the, within the, the confines of that world. That everybody worship them. And as a result, they have forgotten. They have forgotten the true, living, everlasting God, Elohim, ancient of days, the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one who became incarnate, came into this world, was conceived by a through the, the womb of a virgin Mary, came here and endured the cross, precious you and I, with his precious blood. But today, many have made themselves gods. Hallelujah. God is taking back his church. God is taking back his word, hallelujah. When, you know, God is taking, God is speaking. He's always speaking, people of God. God is always speaking. And what is required of you and I in a season like this is to seek the face of God each and every day. Draw nearer to him and he will draw nearer to you. Don't panic. Some of you right now, you're listening to me. I know you are partaking of the Holy Communion. If you have water, that you want me to bless, hallelujah, those of you that are working, hallelujah, you want water for me to bless tonight, we'll pray over the water, hallelujah, be it a bag of water or whatever it is, some of you, I believe, most of us, we have our anointing oil, hallelujah, we'll get, get, if you have oil that you want us to pray over, we'll pray over that tonight, pray over your water as well, and in these last days, God will preserve his own, just as uh, uh, the Passover was instituted, and God told Moses that, the children of Israel should take a lamb. Each one lamb for a household. Hallelujah. People of God. And the blood that was applied on the doorpost of the lentil was itself as an exemption. Now, I always say this. You cannot cancel a prophetic agenda. God has, it has already happened. What you need to do is to claim your exemption. That is all you can do. The children of Israel were in Egypt. All the, 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 the judgment that was going on, they were exempted. Why the children, they were flies, they were, eh, 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 how do you say it? The, 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 the first bowl of the Egyptian beast were dying. The children of Israel, where were they? They were in Egypt. Yet, not a single person they lost to any of those plagues. Is someone hearing me? So, if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. That even in the midst of darkness, in the midst of darkness, you will still glitter, you will still glow. If someone hearing me today, put God first. In times like this, in season like this, what is required of you is your faith in Him. That is why He was asking the disciples when the wind was tossing the boat here and there. 
The Bible says he was dead. He was in a boat. He was asleep. He was calm. Hallelujah. And till they woke him up, they woke him up. And they said, Lord, we are about to die. You don't care about us. Hallelujah. He asked them, where is your faith? Hallelujah. People of God. The storm, the war is, the storm is tossing our world like this now. What is required of you is your faith in him. Hallelujah. What will see you through the darkest of moments? What will see you through the darkest of time is our faith. Hallelujah. What sees us through our darkest moments in life is our faith. That is why I love the woman with the issue of blood. She had the courage in the gospel. The Bible says for 12 years, she sought to be killed. But one day, she heard that Jesus was passing by. She might have been hearing the good news. People that God, you and I, we are a testimony of that good news of God. Hallelujah. Some of you, you should have been dead and gone by now. But by his grace, through his saving grace on the cross, you and I will now have life. And the Bible says at that moment, she said, Only if I will touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Can you imagine somebody for 12 years bleeding? How pale she might have been. But she fought her way to the crowd because she believed people of God. Today, if you believe, that which you have been believing God for can become a testimony into your head tonight as I'm speaking to you. Is someone hearing me? Some of you, some of you, your businesses, you know, because of what happened, some of you, your, your job, they've been, they told you to sit home, they cut your hours, and all of this, hallelujah. God can turn any circumstance around. I told you, the last day of the fast and prayer, some of you, God will use this situation, hallelujah, to elevate you. Some of you, you have testimonies that this was your prosperous moment. Even though people are weeping, even though people are crying, but yet and still, God will protect his own. When the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, he told them to plunder the Egyptians. Go and ask them for treasure gifts. They left out of bondage with gold, 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 people of God. In this season, don't look down. Don't look at your current situation. God can mold you into something bigger than yourself. Always have an expectation about, about this God. Hallelujah. Have an expectation. Each and every day, each and every day, have an expectation. Have an expectation. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare, oh God, tonight, everyone under the sound of my voice, no one is permitted to die, oh God, Father, from this pandemic. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak hope. I speak peace. I speak stability. I speak, oh God, your divine covering. Your divine protection over the lives of your people. I pray, oh God, Father, every relationship, oh God, Father, that is going against the storm. I declare that there be peace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just as the disciples walk you up and you rebuke the storm, I rebuke every storm in the life of your people tonight, oh God, Father. Be it a storm of financial hardship, financial difficulty, financial stagnation, marital confusion, children disobedience, hardship in your business, in your work areas, financial uncertainty, tonight by the divine power of God, just as Christ came and do the cross to bring restoration to you and I tonight, I speak restoration over your life, I speak peace in your family, I speak stability in your finances, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, ancient of this. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Ancient of this. I pray for every boy, every girl, every child, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the young ones, I declare and decree, we shall live, O God, to fulfill our days. None of us shall bury our young ones in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Elohim. Thank you, Ancient of this. 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 Mount Shekel, Rekitim, Thank you, Father. There's a family that's watching right now. 
There's a family that's watching right now because of the coronavirus. There have been uh, challenges in your finances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And your husband and yourself. Hallelujah. There's a, a spouse, a couple, a couple. Hallelujah. Even your husband had a heated, 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 heated fellowship. Hallelujah. Because things are getting a little tight. Hallelujah. God is bringing restoration to your home. Hallelujah. Things will be difficult now, but He's bringing a shift in your family. Hallelujah. He's bringing a shift in your family. God is resetting your priorities. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Elohim. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. This is family that's watching. You have a little child that is going down with cold. Hallelujah. And you, you are a little bit frightened. You scare. You think it's the virus. Hallelujah. I give them, let them partake of that communion. Hallelujah. And they, that siege will be over in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's many that's watching. You've been sick lately. Hallelujah. I think it's a fever. You've been having severe fever. Hallelujah. Severe fever. Hallelujah. Receive your healing now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive your healing now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There's a lady that's watching it right now. You had a fallout with your mother-in-law. Hallelujah. Lately. You had a fallout with your mother-in-law. Lately. Hallelujah. God is bringing peace right now. God is bringing restoration. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Elohim. Thank you, Asian of this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, my God. There's lots of people worrying. I see there's lots of people. You are worrying about your rent, your mortgages. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God says, I'm the God who provides. Hallelujah. I am your Jehovah Jireh. That even in this time, in this season, I am God, hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. This is a song I'm hearing tonight. Someone here to play this song. For you are God all by yourself, hallelujah. You know the song, right? Play that song. He's God all by himself. Even in the midst of the storm, he is still God, hallelujah. Even in the midst of the storm, he is still God. Thank you, Father. I see a couple, hallelujah. I see a couple. There's this confusion between your children, how the children should be handled, the care and them, you know, God is, you know, God wants you to be kind, hallelujah, God wants you to be kind, God wants you to be kind, hallelujah, it's like your daughter, I think it's a girl, hallelujah, it's a daughter, you want, it's a, something is happening, I don't know, between, uh, probably a formal relationship, and your child, your daughter, something is happening with your family, and your family is, a little shaky right now, hallelujah. The peace of God is about to reign in your home, in your home, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you. Ah, uh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Just live up prayer right now, people of God. Some of us were family in Africa, hallelujah. I learned that it's not easy over there too. We have our daughter over there, hallelujah. We have a family in Africa. Some of you from Liberia, where I'm from, Ghana, Africa, Nigeria, where, you know, wherever. Just live on prayer that God will sustain them, God will keep them in this time. That the leaders will make the right decisions. Hallelujah. In times like this, the leaders, African leaders are about to be tested. Hallelujah. They are about to be tested. There is something coming that will test their leadership. Some, and uh, that will be a decisive point, decisive moment in their presidency. Those that are presidents, you know, based on the decision they will make. In this season, that will be the end. Some will make mistakes, and that will be the end of their leadership. Hallelujah. God will spit some people out of his mouth. Hallelujah. There will be some changes. A few months ago, I think it was last one or so, a few months ago, the Lord gave me that resurrection, and I ministered that there's going to be a shaking in governments all over the world, specifically in Africa. Hallelujah. Because the end is nearing. The second coming of the Lord. Is, 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 is as close than ever before. Hallelujah. There will be some shaking in government. Hallelujah. Because what God wants to save his people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Elohim. Thank you, Asian of this. We bless your name tonight. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Lord, let your name be praised. 
Let your name be glorified. Let your name be exalted. Father, 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 Father. I pray, oh God, for the New Yorkers. I pray, Father, you will step into their boat. You will turn their circumstances around. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise tonight. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord God, for our families in Africa. You will sustain them, O God. Give them, O God, Father, the ability to make the right decisions, O God. Now, it is time for husbands. It's time for you to lead. It's time for you to lead. This is no small moment. Hallelujah. Now, you come to understand that when Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, when God came, he didn't say, where, he didn't say Eve, where are you? He said, Adam, where are you? Men, you need to step up. You need to step up now. Draw closer to God. You know, God never, he never leaves, you know, the responsibility of the house is placed upon the man. That is why God was asking, Adam, where are you? Where are you? I entrusted you with the responsibility. By the way, when God was giving the, 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 the instructions to uh, not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the woman was in there. It was entrusted to the man. So the man is, is responsible. Whatever happens in your marriage, in your relationship, you the man, you want to take responsibility. Take responsibility. Stop shifting blames. Be responsible. Be responsible. Your, your, your inability to act. Hallelujah. As a leader. Many of times, most especially in the West, you see many men just sit back because the wife is working. She's running the house and everything. So you think you are free. You need to inject your ideas. How the family is going forward. Hallelujah. Be responsible, man. It is time for you to lead. Hallelujah. It is time for you to lead. Just like God said to Joshua after the death of Moses. He said, My servant Moses is dead. It's time for you to lead my people across the Jordan. People of God. These are difficult times. It doesn't call. It's not a time where you may you just sit back and watch all the football game. You want to sit down with your family. You want to go read the Bible. I see many houses, many homes, the husband barely sit down together with the family. You know, go back to that again. People of God, hallelujah. God is resetting everything. Re, you know, reprioritize. You want you to re look at look at your priorities again. Hallelujah. Is someone here with me tonight? Thank you, Father, that men will receive strength and power and their courage, Father, to lead their families. Again, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that men will become a God-fearing again, Lord, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. This is a time for a husband and wife to come together, not for you to fight, hallelujah, not for you to disagree, hallelujah. You know, you may disagree, but let there be a common ground. There is no such thing as a perfect marriage. There is no such thing as a perfect you know, relationship is somewhere here with But it becomes perfect if you are able to disagree and yet find a common ground. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And many Christians watching me, you've been part of some ministries, you know, and you have not been taking your Christian work seriously. You saw Christianity to be a social gathering. Social gathering. God has allowed season like this so that you can establish your relationship on a solid foundation with him. Hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for you to take a retrospect. People of God, stop playing church. Church is not a building. No. He no longer dwells in temples. Some of you, is that social gathering that you miss every time you want to show up. That's not church, people of God. That's not church. God wants you to be in right standing with him. That's why he gave me that vision that I began to ask. And he said, what? Chris, my, uh, my followers have been declining over the years. Hallelujah. Some of you, your faith has was cold. You are so cold. 
that you don't know how to have the confidence in Christ you come. Whether you go to heaven or you go to hell, you have no idea whatsoever. Heaven, heaven is real. Hell is, uh, hell is real. So stop associating yourself with pastor who say, oh, I did not go to Bible school to preach about hell. I did not go to Bible school to preach about sin. Is someone hearing me? Now, God has shown to us that he is, the Bible says what? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He did not inherit it. It was not passed down to him by somebody. He created it. The fact that you and I, we are free moral agents. Free moral agency doesn't mean that he doesn't have influence over you. What's the ever? Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? God has summoned the world. God has summoned the church. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? I pray that you have a blessed night and stay in tune, be in tune with him. Hallelujah. Moments like these people of God, you take a seat. Doesn't matter how much it is. Hallelujah. Out of the sincerity of your heart. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? We are not just, just takers. We are givers. Hallelujah. We give to people as well. Hallelujah. As the Spirit of God leads us. Thank you, Father. I pray tonight you have a blessed night. Father, in the name of the Lord, some of you tonight will be having dreams. Hallelujah. It's, I, I, I can see a lady. You have been having your dream has been unclear. Hallelujah. God has been speaking to you for your dream. You'll be picking it in pieces tonight because you have been on a serious attack tonight. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I break every hand of the enemy, oh God, Father, that seek to dilute their dreams, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Dreams are so powerful, people of God. Dreams are so powerful. Dreams are so powerful. That's why even our Lord and our Savior Jesus, at an early age, he was speared because of dreams. When he was born, the Bible says that Herod, as some of his astrologers, the wise men, he inquired of them, where did the scripture say that the son of, that the Messiah was to be born? They told him in Bethlehem of Judea. He said, when you go to worship, bring me word that I myself will go there and worship. No, he didn't want to go and worship. He had a secret agenda to kill your child. But the Bible says that the Lord appeared to the wise men in a dream. He told them to divert and they took another path, people of God. And when they left, the Bible says that what? The Lord also appeared to Joseph in a dream. Take the child to Egypt. Because when they were after the child's life, and after Joseph took Jesus, baby Jesus to Egypt, after all those people that were seeking the child's life were all dead, the Bible says that the Lord spoke to Joseph again in a dream to return. Hallelujah. It's so heard Joseph was soon his prophetic destiny in a dream. People of God. Is so hearing me. Dream is so powerful. Hallelujah. God says in his word, if there be a prophet among you, I speak to him in visions and I reveal myself to him in dreams. Hallelujah. May the Lord watch over your dreams tonight. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray, Spirit of the living God, do a new thing in this life. Just as you say, oh God, do the fast and prayer, that you will pull, oh God, the supernatural power on your people in these last days, Father, that there will be signs and wonders, oh God, that will be so common to match the past and the power of the enemy, oh God. I pray tonight, I speak, I baptize your people, oh God, tonight, with that prophetic utterance, oh God, Father. Activate, oh God, their prophetic senses, Lord. Speak to them in their dreams, oh God, Father. May their dreams be even crystal clear. May some receive visions, fulfilling Jewel chapter 2, verse 28. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, let there be a turnaround, oh God, in the whole in, in the spiritual lives of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. They say there's a man that is watching me right now. Hallelujah. A man of God watching me. And the spiritual life has been like down, drink, down the drink. The enemy has been fighting you, fighting you, fighting you. It's a lady also, hallelujah. A woman of God watching me in the prayer life. It's been going down south. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is breaking restoration, reinforcement, the anointing to pray, the anointing to fast, the anointing to read his word, hallelujah, is coming stronger upon you now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. This lady that's watching me, hallelujah. This lady that's watching me, believing God for the food of the world. The Lord says, in due season, in due season, in due season, there will be laughter in your house. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Elohim. Father, I bless your name. I give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Have a blessed night, people of God. I would love to stay. Hallelujah. I would love to stay. I would love to stay. Hallelujah. I would love to stay. Have a blessed, 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 blessed night. Have a blessed, blessed, blessed night. My God, my God, my God, my God. I want to pray for the, the older people tonight. The older people. You have your parents, 50 and above. Hallelujah. 50 and above. Your grandparents, your in-laws, 50 and above. Hallelujah. I pray for them now because the virus is from my understanding. You know, these are people that are vulnerable. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, you have a loved one. You have your elderly. You know, use them as you can serve as a point of contact. Hallelujah. That God will exempt them from this plague. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray for our elderly, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You will sustain them. You will keep them, oh God, in this season. You will keep them in this time, Heavenly Father. I pray, oh God, let not any sickness, let not any disease, any calamity, Father, come near their dwelling. Father, by your precious blood, we declare, oh God, we mark them tonight, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Elohim. We will close now, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I commit your people to you as they sleep, as they rest, oh God, Father, to go to work. I pray for strength. I pray for divine favor. In this season, Father, even, oh God, where it seems impossible for men to favor them, I pray, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that everyone under the sound of my voice, that, oh God, a supernatural turnaround will happen for them in every way they believe in you for, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless, oh God, the works of their hands, oh God. I pray everywhere your people shall step, they shall possess it, Lord. Expand their territories, letting their courts, oh God, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. May good news and good news alone saturate the atmosphere where your people dwell. I build a hedge of protection, Father. Ah, Lord, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Every attack, oh God, Father, from the kingdom of darkness tonight, I render it powerless in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I pray, oh God, Father. Lord, you, you will baptize them with new ideas for their families. Bless the work of their hands. New ideas, oh God, Father. Business breakthrough, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray their spiritual life will be intact, oh God, Father. For they shall seek your face. Each and every day. Let there be a supernatural encounter. Let there be a supernatural revelation, oh God, Father. Speak to their spirit, oh God, their spirit, may Father. For your word says, oh God, the spirit of man. Is the candle of the law. You will alter their steps wherever they go, they fly, they rise, they drop. Let your divine favor, Father, and protection accompany them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. Have a blessed, 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 blessed night. People of God, have a blessed night. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mashikara Bastaya. Ikara Katabastaya Rakata Bastaya. Brasi kere kere deski ala bastaya. Ikara. Have a blessed night, Lord of God. Have a blessed, blessed, blessed night. We'll see you on Sunday morning. Resurrection morning. Come. It's gonna be powerful. Resurrection morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.
Covenant keeping God, people of God, have a blessed, 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 blessed night. Have a blessed, blessed night. We love you all. Greetings from the woman of God. Hallelujah. I know you're very enjoying her. <laughs> With your morning prayers. Hallelujah. She's a morning woman. She's a morning person. Hallelujah. And more of an, uh, how do you call that? Night turner. Yeah, I'm up at night. Nothing you cannot do. You are my covenant. You are my covenant keeping God. Okay, my okay, okay, my okay, okay, my okay, my okay, okay, my okay, my Have a blessed night, you would have gone. Have a blessed, 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 blessed night. We love you all. Greetings again from your woman of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, all the battles are running me. God of victory, I know you will deliver me. But I have made up my mind to say, Have a blessed night, you would have gone. Love you all.